afternoon, Minor High School's band director was in court to fight ongoing charges following an incident at a football game last month. Johnny Mims was tased and arrested after he refused to stop playing after the game against Minor and Jackson Olin finished. The confrontation escalated and ended with him in a police car charged with disorderly conduct, harassment and resisting arrest. WVTM 13's Aaron Llewellyn spoke with his attorney this afternoon after court wrapped up. Aaron, what's the next step for Mr. Mims? Yeah, Johnny Mims and his attorneys will be back in court on December 6. Now they hope to get the charges against him dismissed, but one legal expert says that that might be more difficult than it seems. No one has ever witnessed a band director or an educator, period, being tased three times. Attorney Wandalyn Gavan calls what happened to her client, Johnny Mims, a tragedy. People across the country have seen this body cam footage from Birmingham police of the minor high school band director being tased. I asked attorney Eric Guster his legal opinion on whether or not Mims could have the case thrown out. But when a band director is being defiant to police officers and their specific orders, it makes a very bad uh, bad level of decision making in, in his part. Gavan says officers should have never used excessive force with her client and instead should have de-escalated the situation. Even at the time that my, my client got off the podium when the band stopped, period, why did the police have to engage him? They shouldn't have done anything once it, the music stopped. And at the very least, Gavan believes this case should be moved outside of the city of Birmingham. The court in Birmingham relies a lot on the law enforcement uh, for the city of Birmingham that we would definitely have to see that we would definitely be able to get a fair uh, hearing before uh, the court in Birmingham. She's hoping to get the case moved to a high court if it goes to trial, but Guster says the move may not make a difference. Police officers make arrests all the time. So whether it's in state court, municipal court, or federal court, a police officer or some law enforcement official made the arrest. Now again, Gavan is hoping to get those charges against her client dismissed, but if that doesn't happen, he can enter a plea of guilty or not guilty. Now again, they are going to be back in court on December 6th, and that case will head to trial if they can't get those charges dismissed. And we also reached out to the city of Birmingham's attorney, and we were told that the city does not comment on pending litigation. But for right now, we're live in Birmingham, Aaron Llewellyn, WVCM 13. American leadership is what holds the world together. American alliances will keep us, America, safe. American values are what make us a partner that other nations want to work with. To put all that at risk, if we walk away from Ukraine, if we turn our backs on Israel, it's just not worth it. This evening, President Biden making a rare Oval Office address to ask Congress for more aid for the ongoing wars in Israel and Ukraine. And the president's plea comes less than one day after he visited Tel Aviv to speak with Israeli leaders about the ongoing war against Hamas. The U.S. recently delivered a shipment of armored vehicles to the region. President Biden urged Congress to come together to address the crisis, reminding them that 32 Americans have already died in the war. Our Kaylin Norwood will have more on his address coming up in the next few minutes. More than a year after his murder, Birmingham police still have not found the person who killed Roderick Gray Jr. He was killed in an alleyway on 4th Street North. Officers believe he went to a nightclub nearby before getting shot. If you have any information on this case, call Crime Stoppers and remember you can remain anonymous. Birmingham police are looking for a missing man that could be in danger. Donald Cash was last seen Tuesday, September 25th in the Wylam community. He was dressed in all black. Take a look at his picture. If you know where he is, call police. New details on what led to a railroad worker's death last year. Walter Griffin died when he was hit by a metal beam sticking out from a parked rail car on a different railroad track. Now, we now know, that, now know that the U.S. pipe facility noticed the beam hanging from the top of the car but never told Norfolk Southern about it. The NTSB is conducting a much larger investigation into Norfolk Southern safety practices. Well, Birmingham Southern College once again facing tough financial situations. After state lawmakers passed a bill to allow them to give private college loans, school leaders say state treasurer denied their application. For that reason, BSE's president says they're suing the treasurer to compel him to follow the law and grant the almost $30 million bridge loan. Daniel Coleman says the college pays about $13 million a year in taxes and makes a $100 million economic impact a year. 
He's rallying students to reach out to the governor and state treasurer. Well, they need to let their legislators know, the senators, the state uh, representatives who supported us so much. They need to let them know that the, the will of the legislature is being thwarted, and, and, they, and, and, and we can't stand for that. Now, the first hearing in the suit was held today. A judge has ordered the state to file its motion to dismiss the case by Monday. They're due back in court on the 25th. Well, turning now to the weather, we saw a sprinkle or two this afternoon, but once again, it wasn't enough to get us out of the drought. That's right. Joining us now, Chief Meteorologist Jason Simpson. And I mean, even despite the little bit of rain I know we need it, we can't really complain about the weather. It's been beautiful, but we just need a little rain to start moving things along and progressing toward uh, more typical kinds of agricultural environment and lake levels and pond levels and everything else around here. This is what we see on WVTM 13 live Doppler radar. There's an old saying among the weather community that if you're in a drought, don't forecast rain because you're not going to get much of it. And right now there is not much out there. This is it in Fayette County, a little bit in Lamar County, and this is where it has been basically concentrated this afternoon. If you want to call it that there just hasn't been that much from Jefferson County southward, but we've seen some showers at least in the area through tomorrow morning. You still got about six to eight hours to see an isolated shower or two before we can completely write off the chance. The air is so dry, though, even with a south wind that most of us just aren't going to get enough to count. Some isolated showers in the morning. Temperatures start out in the upper 50s. We're going toward the mid and upper 70s by the time buses are rolling home tomorrow afternoon. So here's your starting point. 55 Haleyville, 61 at Chelsea and in the upper 50s around Oxford. Highs in the 80s over West Alabama tomorrow. I'll show you how warm it looks this weekend behind our cold front coming up. Sherry? Well, next year, Tuscaloosa voters could decide if property taxes will go up in the city school district. This week, the school board decided to offer the tax referendum for 2024. If approved, the tax rate would jump by 11.5 mil to 11.5 mils, or about 22% of an increase. The higher taxes would generate more than $17 million for Tuscaloosa City Schools. That would begin in 2025. The city council and the state legislature will have to approve the vote before an election day can be scheduled. Children's of Alabama is getting a much needed renovation. The state just approved a $55 million project to expand the 12th floor of the Benjamin Russell building. It would become a 50 bed unit for critical care patients. They also want to renovate part of the fifth floor of the McWayne building. They're hoping to have it all finished by 2026. The FDA is considering a ban on potentially dangerous ingredients found in some hair straightening products. The ban targets relaxers with formaldehyde and formaldehyde releasing chemicals. The agency says when these products are heated and inhaled, they can make you sick, potentially increasing the risk of cancer. That's very unfortunate because we've been using relaxers since I was a little kid. You know, I remember my mom even using them. So if it's gonna hurt us definitely needs to be removed. Ursula Johnson is a hairstylist and she says while many people still use relaxers, some of her customers have stopped after learning about the health risk. Well, electric car owners now have a new place to charge their vehicles. The Birmingham Parking Authority and Alabama Clean Fuels Coalition cut the ribbon on a new EV charging station in the Avondale Business District. Now it's the first EV charging station for any of the Birmingham Parking Authority's facilities. And we're just nine days away from the Magic City Classic, and the city is hard at work making sure everyone can enjoy the game. Today, they announced shuttle services will be offered at three locations, the Birmingham Crossplex, Botwell Auditorium, Parking Deck, and downtown across from Phillips Academy. Each ride is five bucks round trip. They will accept payment in forms of card or uh, cards, debit cards.